everybody and welcome to this tutorial today I'm just gonna continue from where I left off anyway go ahead and open up your browser type in well let's just see what the IP address is I have config excellent so this is my IP address go ahead and copy it yours will perhaps be different or something of a kind doesn't really matter just go ahead and copy it control V into the URL uh, URL field of your browser paste it there go ahead and open up your folder and immediately we encounter a problem here we need a username and a password go ahead and open up your terminal these things are stored by default in your configure in your uh, installation files so go ahead actually they're in the readme file so in the instruction set go ahead and type in CD var www uh, CD dv wa ls where is it and ah, there we go there's a readme file so let's just go ahead and open up the readme file and you have a lot of explanations here feel free to go ahead and read through them well actually there aren't that many that much of it but there are, there are some useful things so it says default username is admin and default password is password there is an installation video as well. I mean, I've already showed it to you, but you can go ahead and feel free to watch this version of it as well. Uh, I don't think that you'll see anything extremely different, but they use XAMPP to actually install, to actually run the the uh, the damn vulnerable application. I use a uh, different, I use a different type here, but it doesn't really matter. You can use the one that I am using, the one that comes as a default with a Kali operating system, with Kali Linux operating system. Anyway, as I said, feel free to check the link out, but we've mainly opened this file to see the username and password, and the username is admin, password is password. Feel free to change that later on, or don't, doesn't really matter, since you are the only person using this virtual machine. If this is your physical machine, uh, it would be a good idea to actually change it. So, admin, and down here I'm going to go ahead and write password. But since you are using a bridged adapter in VirtualBox, perhaps it would be a good idea to change it indeed. But, doesn't, uh, but for the time being, let's just go ahead and see what's up for the offer here. So you have a lot of these types of attacks. You have brute force, command execution, cross-site cross request forgery, uh, file in, uh, SQL injection, file inclusion, etc. There are a lot of them. I will go through some of them, but down below you ha I won't go through all of them, obviously, but I will go through some, as I said, through a significant amount anyway. And down below you have DVWA security, so go ahead and click on that. You are able to set your security level of this web application in general, so it can be low, medium, or high. I would recommend that you go with high primarily because that's going to reflect the real-time circumstances to the be uh, to the greatest degree. If you go with low, pretty much everything you do, it's going to fly, which is not the case in the real world. Anyway, now that it is set in high, click on Submit to remember changes, and go ahead and click on SQL Injection Blind. Now, this is where usually people type these things in and you might think oh well that's not the case in the real world we don't have a neat clear field where we can type the things in but keep in mind this is just for your convenience this is just for convenience sake so if I just click on empty submit you can see up here in the URL section there it says ID equals and then there is nothing there so whatever I would type in here would basically uh, be set to ID equals. Let's type in 3333 uh, submit. There you go. It says ID equals 3333. So in the real world, you would be typing these things up here in the ID section or something of a kind, while here they've just constructed a neat field where you can type these things in. As I said, doesn't really matter all the things that you type in here uh, in the user ID field. You can also type in here in the URL and the effect will be exactly the same. There is literally no difference of whatsoever. Anyway, now that we have our security parameters set up and that the environment is set up, that we've managed to log into it, let's go ahead and start up 
burp suit. Why do we need burp suit? Burp suit will create a proxy for us. Uh, we need it in order to capture some of the information. Some information. Primarily, we need to capture the uh, we need to capture the session cookie so that we can use it later on with the SQL map. Primarily because we have actually logged into the web into a website and we need to enable our SQL map to actually request a field and go past the authentication with the session ID cookie. This is also a good method primarily because most of the sites out there will allow you to create some sort of a basic user and at the registration site at the main login site there are countless countermeasures. There's uh, intrusion detection systems, uh, if they see that something is up the red flags will be raised, uh, your IP will be banned and then you will need to change the IP uh, a ton load of things will be there. A lot of all the almost all the security systems will be focused primarily on that login page, and that can be a problem. But if you manage to create even a regular user, any kind of user, if you just type uh, if you just type in some credentials there, whatever, login, then suddenly on a lot of sites and this is a really bad thing for a lot of for a lot of websites out there a lot of these systems tend to simply disappear all the fields past the authentication are any authentication are pretty much neglected and there are a lot more fields and there is a far greater possibility that the mistakes are have been made somewhere and that you can actually make some sort of an exploit there using an SQL injection method However, if you can't create any sort of user usernames or users or anything of a kind, you will actually need to attack the login page itself. In that case, I do not believe that you will need a session ID, although you can still get it. Now, keep in mind that this is your browser that we're dealing with, and we can do with it whatever we want. Even though this website is somewhere in a remote site, we can do whatever we want with this browser in order to test the functionality, in order to conveniently capture the information that goes between us and the website in order to use it with the SQL map. For that we need to use burp suit as I've said so go ahead and open up another terminal here let me just zoom this in log in as root of course and type in burp suit press enter if you're running it the first time around, you might be asked to accept a license agreement and to provide anonymous feedback. Whether you provide anonymous feedback or not, the choice is entirely yours, but you do need to agree to the terms of use. You do not, as I said, you don't actually need to provide any sort of feedback of whatsoever. They've just, uh, they've just included that as an option, but you can disable it and it's fine. The program won't actually send anything in regards to you. Anyway, we have the burp suit running up. Go ahead and in the upper left corner, click on proxy. Click on intercept. Actually, you can click on options in the right and make sure that 127.0.0.18080 is selected. It will be selected by default. I've created some other things down below, but don't pay any attention to that. Uh, go back to intercept. Make sure that the intercept is on and not off. Go ahead and minimize your terminals. Go back to the what, go back to your web browser. Click on Edit, Preferences, Advanced, Network, Settings. Click on Manual Proxy Configuration and make sure that you have these things typed in. So 127.0.0.1 port 8080. Use Proxy Server for all protocols. There you go. So those, those are those are pretty much the only settings that you need to type. You need to type in the IP address of the loopback and the loopback IP address, and you need to write in the port number. The port number is 8080. Click OK. Close. Reload the site, and of course the site won't actually be able to reload until you let it through. So you you can immediately see that the burp suit has managed to capture information here and it is waiting for you to tell it what you want to do with it so you can either forward it you can drop it and there are actions here uh, to send it to a lot of to a lot of other functionalities in burp suit but for the time being I want to copy the URL so go ahead and click on action copy URL open up your 
text editor, whichever one you want. Ah, oh, come on, don't do this to me. I don't know, the burp suit has some sort of problems copying these things. Have no idea why. Ah, oh, come on, don't. Let's see if it's going to work like this. Excellent, so... Yeah, if it doesn't work the first time around, just try to do it again. And that's and usually it will work. And if it doesn't work, try it again and again. And a couple of times like that. So if it doesn't work after a couple of times, okay, there's some there's some sort of a serious problem. If it does work, fantastic. Anyway, uh, you see that the site is still spinning, nothing has happened. I can just click on forward and the site will load in the back. Intercept is still on, but we don't actually oh yes we do. Okay, so I do apologize. I've actually forgot to take one more thing out of this. Uh, let's just uh, let's just repeat the process. So you see, if you ah, oh, come on, reload the site. Excellent. So you see where it says cookie. It's a security high atma blah 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 whatever. Uh, some other things down below that not even God can read, and then you have PHP S E S S I D. Copy that. That is your cookie session ID. You will need it. So go ahead and copy it. Open up your text editor, and right below the URL, go ahead and type this cookie session ID. Excellent. So now you can now you can feel free to close the burp suit. You sure you want to exit? Yes, I am sure. You can see if I when I shut down the proxy, since my browser is configured to go through a proxy, it's going to shut down immediately, and it's not going to be able to do anything. Uh, you will effectively render your browser unable to surf the web at all. You won't be able to use it to surf the web. So go ahead back to settings, click on use uh, system proxy settings, click on OK, close. Try again, and there we go. It does. Then it does work without any sort of problems. Now that we have taken some information, uh, you might you are not remember all of this that you are doing. You are doing on your own machine. Uh, the only thing that is remote here is this website. So you can configure your browser any way you like. We've simply used Burp Suit to extract certain information. We wanted the cookie session, and we wanted the exact URL. Well, you could have gotten the URL from here, to be honest, but uh, doesn't really matter. I wanted to get the cookie session ID. There are some other ways and other methods, but I decided to use this one in particular with the burp suit. And in the follow-up tutorial, uh, we're gonna use the SQL map in order to try to do something here to see if we can find some vulnerabilities, to see if we can actually perform a scan and eventually extract some information. Until then, I bid you all farewell and wish you a tongue load of luck with this.